Any comments or questions? Peter? I, I don't think. I have a motion to approve the minutes. That's, that's there, are, there are no comments. We've had a motion and it's been seconded. All those in favor? Motion carries. Uh, the uh, minute secretary will be doing the minutes uh, from the videotape, is my understanding. To this meeting. Okay, correspondence that we've received prior to tonight's hearing, we have a letter dated June 3rd of 2005 from Sarah Lyons Price regarding the Turkey Hill Farm Camp application. We also have a letter from Carolyn Flaherty dated June 8th, 2005 regarding the same application. And then finally we have a letter from uh, the State of Maine Department of Health and Human Services regarding the Turkey Hill Farm Camp application. Uh, we had a uh, brief discussion before we went on the air that we may actually go out of order with this agenda. And Peter, I understand you have a motion. I do. I, uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that we um, uh, move item number two, the Grover Road subdivision amendments and private access, a per access way permit to uh, the first item on the agenda. This seems like almost the consent agenda item. Okay. Uh, motion's been made. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? <clears throat> Okay, without further ado then, uh, the Grover Road subdivision amendments and private access way permit, uh, Leland Murray and Stephen Murray are requesting amendments to the previously approved Grover Road subdivision to reconfigure existing lots, build a public road and construct a private access way for lot one, all located at the end of Grover Road, section 16-2-5 amendments to previously approved subdivision and section 19-7-9 private access way permit. I just would note for the record that this project was approved February 15, 2005 and expired when the plan was not recorded within 90 days. My understanding is the applicant is coming before us to ask us to approve the exact same set of plans that we approved last February. That is correct. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Bob Metcalf with Mission Associates and first would like to apologize for taking the board's time again on this uh, through miscommunication. Inadvertently, we did not record the mile hour within the 90 day time frame. Uh, the plan that is back before you is the same plan that was approved in February of this year. Uh, reconfiguration of the existing subdivision to create four lots, a public road, Grover Road, with a private access way to an additional uh, existing lot on the rear. Uh, I say that this summer, unless you want us to go into much more detail and take more of your time, we might be happy to answer any questions. I don't think we need any more summary than that. Thank okay. you. Uh, does anybody on the board have any questions or comments? seems appropriate here that we may just move forward for a motion uh, for approval of this project. It doesn't seem to me we need to go through the completeness and public hearing stage again since it's the exact same application. I, I agree. And for the record, Mr. Chairman, I have a motion for the board to consider that we make the following findings of fact. <clears throat> Leland and Steve Murray requesting amendments to the previous, previously approved Grover Road subdivision to reconfigure, reconfigure existing lots build a public road and construct a private access way for lot 11, all located at the end of Grover Road, town map U20-7, uh, lot seven, which requires review under six, section 16-2-5, amendments to previously approved subdivisions, and section 19-7-9, private access ways. Number two, um, the site includes existing trees in the area of the road right away that provide a buffer to the abutter. Number three, the plan includes conveyance of easements. Number four, a pedestrian walkway will be installed at the end of Grover Road to connect to Fowler Road. Number five, a performance guarantee will ensure that the subdivision is developed in accordance with the approved plans. Uh, therefore, be it ordered that based on the materials and plans submitted and the facts presented, the application of Leland and Steve Murray for amendments to the previously approved Grover Road subdivision reconfigure existing lots, build a public road and construct a private access way for lot 11, all located at the end of Grover Road, uh, town map U20, lot seven, be approved subject to the following conditions. One, that the trees to be preserved on the south side of Grover Road, road in a tree preservation plan that includes installation of a barrier at the drip line of the trees be added to the plans, um, that the road and the drainage easements deeds be submitted in a form acceptable to the town attorney and the town manager, 
three, that the pathway extending from the end of Grover Road be surfaced in a manner that will withstand erosion on steep slopes, and four, that a performance guarantee be submitted in a form acceptable to the town attorney and an amount acceptable to the town engineer, all acceptable to the town manager prior to the issuance of a building permit and or any alteration of the site. Peter Hayden has, Peter Hayden has made a motion. Is there a second? Second. Seconded it by David Griffin. All those in favor? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Under old business, uh, and thank you to uh, Wiley Enterprises for agreeing to reorder the uh, agenda items tonight. Uh, Wiley Enterprises LLC is requesting site plan review of a mixed office multifamily residential building to be built on Davis Point Lane. The building will include 6,000 square feet of office space and two apartments. A public hearing has been scheduled for this evening. The application will be reviewed for compliance with sec section 19-9 site plan regulations. At this point, I would invite the applicant's representative to come to the podium and summarize where we are. Uh, good evening, and thank you for hearing us tonight. Uh, my name is Owens McCullough, civil engineer with Sebago Technics, here tonight on behalf of Wiley Enterprises. Uh, with me is Joel Fitzpatrick uh, from Wiley Enterprises. Um, first of all, I'd like to apologize. Generally, we have a color rendering, but believe it is among the missing and in the applicant's truck at home. So <laughs> uh, tonight it's uh, black and white, so we do apologize for that. Um, this project uh, has been before the board previously at a, at a workshop meeting and then a completeness review. Uh, we also had the opportunity to uh, have a site walk uh, in May uh, to take a look at the project. Uh, several of the abutters were there and we appreciate everybody's comments and input uh, into the project. Uh, we strive to be responsive to all of those comments and questions and uh, instead of going over all the project, I'll just over all the project in detail, I'll cover the things we've changed since we were at the last meeting. Um, one of the uh, uh, primary items that we've done is the town engineer uh, has and public works director took a look at the project and requested that we make some modifications uh, to the utilities within the project. Uh, we were going to extend public sewer uh, from Route 77 into the project site via an easement and then also ser service uh, the existing two lights general store. Uh, our original proposal was to bring a four inch service in just to service our project. Uh, after the public works director looked at it and the town engineer, they asked if we would be willing to increase the size of that sewer to an eight inch sewer and then dedicate uh, an easement across the property over the Davis Point Lane as a public uh, easement to the town of Cape Elizabeth and also an easement over Davis Point Lane. And the purpose of that was that in the event that the town found the need to service um, additional houses or development area, there's a residential development back in here uh, that I believe is not on public sewer. The town felt that they'd like to keep that option open uh, in case uh, they decided to extend sewer. Uh, we were agreeable to that. Uh, we've in, uh, modified the plans to go to an eight inch sewer uh, we've also implemented those easements and have prepared draft easements uh, that I believe the town attorney is taking a look at. And we'll certainly, if there's any language changes, we'll be glad to do that. Uh, the goal is to make sure that easement it benefits the town for a future sewer extension. Um, so that was uh, one of the primary items. Uh, the other item was some discussion on Davis Point Lane itself. Um, as, as the board we've discussed in the past, uh, Davis Point Lane is pushed currently over to one side of the property line. Uh, the public works director has asked us to move it back into the center uh, of the right of way, uh, which we have done. Um, and that is mostly uh, that they like to have them in the center of the right of way so that they can have room for ditches on each side, so that they can have room for the potential for future expansion should that right of way ever um, need to service additional development units. Um, so we have agreed to do that. Uh, we have asked for waivers to uh, a width of 18 feet uh, for the paved width and uh, to go with a 40-foot right-of-way instead of a 50-foot right-of-way. Uh, the existing Davis Point Lane right-of-way is 40 feet. Uh, we propose to leave it as that width, and I think we've worked all that out with the uh, public works director and town engineer. Um, also, 
Uh, the police chief in the uh, town planner's uh, memo has requested that we don't uh, disrupt the pavement until after the beach the beacon race because this is right in that area and the applicant is agreeable to uh, to working with that so that we don't disrupt it. Um, as a person who will be running in it, I appreciate that too. <laughs> so um, uh, we will work with that. The town ma manager has also recommended that a public pedestrian easement uh, be provided within the Davis Point right away through here. And I think the goal is that um, that provides one step closer to a public access easement down to Great Pond. And we're certainly willing to do that. We're going to give an easement to the town anyway for future utility extensions. So we'll just modify the language uh, to allow for a public easement across that property. Um, and also an item in the, uh, in the review letter spoke to uh, the fencing around uh, the solid waste container, which is in this location. That is intended to be an opaque um, uh, fence around it, stockade fence, actually cedar. Um, so uh, that will be cedar. We certainly don't want chain link and, and appreciate picking up on that. So uh, that will definitely be uh, stockade fencing in that area. Um, also, there was a suggestion in the uh, memo to add, I believe, uh, one more tree along Davis Point Road on the south side, uh, which I believe is in this area here. We showed two trees. Uh, as we walk the site, one, we're going to attempt to save a large tree that's out there that we all looked at. That tree will absolutely have to be limbed pretty heavily on one side to accommodate the roadway. There is entirely a possibility that we will damage the root system when we excavate to, to build the road and the sub baits. We're going to try to save it um, if we can. If we can't, there's a note on the plan that that, that tree dies and the applicant will replace it with another street tree. Uh, Maureen has also asked that we plant an additional street tree along this side of the road and we are agreeable to that. I think our plan showed two additional street trees. We would add one more. Uh, to the plan, so that that is uh, certainly something we are willing to do. Uh, the town engineer has also completed uh, a review and issued a letter dated June 14, 2005, uh, with a couple of very minor items in it. Uh, one, uh, I believe, was uh, modifying a uh, typical road section. I believe we showed 15 inches of gravel subbase and three inches of surface gravel. Um, he's requested that it be 12 inches and 6 inches, which is the same section but a different gravel material, and we're certainly agreeable to making that change to the plans. Um, and then I'll, I believe um, the, other, the other items were just that we wanted to modify some language in our stormwater uh, report for clarification. We've done that, and I think um, that it pretty much addresses the review comments. Hopefully. Um, we can move forward with an approval tonight. We appreciate uh, meeting on site. We appreciate the abutters, the Schmaders in particular, for spending time with us. Uh, we strive to provide some additional planning, uh, certainly to address. They have a foundation drain, as we explained across the site, uh, that we're going to continue and connect into. They were kind enough to provide us with information regarding that drain. Um, also, a section of stockade fence across from the entrance. There was some concern that as vehicles might pull out at night, there's a chance for uh, lights to shine out across this area. And they have a deck in their house and the house right here. So we've agreed uh, to put in a section of stockade fence uh, in that area. Also, some additional landscaping, uh, willing to plant some trees back in this area and along the front of the building. And we've added notes to the plan uh, so that uh, once the project gets started, the parking lot gets constructed. Uh, that the Schmaders would have a chance to speak with Joel to pick where they exactly want that section of fence and where some of those trees and buffering would go so that we can maximize it based on the physical features and we are willing to do that. Um, so with that, um, I'll try to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have a public hearing scheduled tonight, so at this point we'll move to the public hearing. Anybody wishing to speak, uh, please come to the podium, identify yourself, and uh, indicate where you live. The public hearing is now open.
Good evening, my name is Gail Schmader. I live at 511 Ocean House Road. I'm an immediate butter, a butter to this property. I very much appreciate the time that you took to come to do the site walk. And I very much appreciate um, how cooperative uh, Mr. Fitzpatrick and his associates have been in working on this project. Of course, as you saw from the site walk, it's going to be a significant impact on my property, significant. And my purpose all along has been to mitigate the impact as much as possible, and it's been wonderful to work with these people. Um, I want to reinforce that buffering is absolutely critical to mitigating this project as far as the impact goes on my property. Um, initially, the fence was to be from 18 to 24 feet, the stockade fence at the site walk. We changed that from 24 to 32 feet, so I just wanted to be sure that that was noted on the plans. Um, with the option of having it up to 32 feet. Um, also, I understand the large tree is um, very important to the buffering. Um, it is my sole buffering from Toolite's general store, and it will be a, a major buffering with this new project. Um, I understand the town's concern to have this road in the center of the right-of-way. I would. Um, love to be able to have an opportunity to ask for maybe a two to three foot variance if that meant we could save this beautiful tree, um, which is a very large, as I said, um, impact on the buffering from Two Lights General Store for my property. I don't know if we can move it off center two to three feet if that, in fact, would be the difference of saving the tree. Um, so I would ask you to consider that possibility. Um, I don't know that anything can be done about this, but I would ask you to appreciate that there is a strip of land 35 feet from the edge of the road to my property that belongs to the state. When Mr. Fitzpatrick um, clears the property to expand his road, the buffering between me, my property and the Two Lights General Store will come down, and it is state property. So I know that limits what we can do, but I would like you to be very sensitive to the fact that I will now lose 35 feet of solid buffering from Two Lights General Store and the parking lot, which will dramatically impact my property again. Um, another way to mitigate this impact as much as possible is to keep the traffic to a minimum. Now, I'm not sure whether this is a private road or a right-of-way. Um, maybe somebody can answer that question. I know it, I didn't get a chance to address it with you when I just thought of it recently. Um, what is it, and is there a speed limit on this road? What is the speed limit? Will the speed limit be posted? If it's a private road, will there be a sign that says this is a private road, which will lessen the amount of traffic? Once the road is tarred, I have a feeling that it will be um, a curiosity for people to drive down that thinking it's a full road. So I don't know where we stand on that. Um, so those are my concerns, and again, thank you for taking the time to do the site walk. Thank, thank you. you. Is there anybody else that wish to speak on this application? Seeing none, I will now close the public hearing. At this point, if any board members have any questions for the applicant. I guess I would just um, ask whether moving the road even a couple of feet, I'm, I'm not sure that will make a dramatic impact. I'm not advocating or not advocating, I'm just trying to flesh out the issue, the request of the abutter, whether, uh, whether that might make any difference in saving the tree. Um, we certainly know the town's engineer and, and uh, director of public works' opinion on it, so I just wanted to know what your thoughts were. I, I don't see that it would make the difference in whether the tree lives or dies mm. in that location. Part of, um, I, I think part of the, the, what will make that tree, whether it makes it or not, is, is the combination of us having to limit pretty heavily, because it's got a pretty wide uh, base to it and, and the branches stick out and it, and it has to be limbed for the roadway in there. So one side of the tree is going to be... Sure very heavily limbed. And then when we make our, our box cut for the roadway to put the gravel in, uh, sometimes 
um, that can have an impact on the root structure. Now, we don't have any utilities coming up through that. Well, we have a water line and an electrical line, uh, but the water line actually uh, juts across the street, I believe, and then up. And so we can, we can, we have some flexibility to install that water line so that it's away from those root structures. Um, so we'll do what we can. Time will most likely tell with it. Um, when the contractor uh, stakes the roadway out, we do the box cut to the limits of clearing, we'll also be able to see what sort of damage or impact to the tree sure. will occur. And I, I, I just am trying to be very upfront that we may not be able to save that tree. We'll make an effort at it. If it comes out and we've added a note to the plan that we're going to replace it with a street tree, unfortunately it won't be as big and 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 as full as what's there now, but we, we will make it, we will replace it. Sure. Any other question, I guess, is her comment about uh, keeping unnecessary, I guess the word would be unnecessary traffic <laughs> down to a minimum. It, it, um, this is a dead, it will be a dead end street. That's it correct. seems to me signing it that way would make some, uh, keep sort of people yep. from wandering down thinking it goes through to somewhere. Um, I'm, I'm not sure adding the word, pr it is a pri going to be a private way when it's it, done, it but that in my experience doesn't seem to <laughs> keep people from <laughs> wandering down them. But yeah. a dead end sign even beyond the, uh, right at the entrance to the commercial building just to keep people from going all the way through might, might help. Yeah. I, I certainly don't see that that would be a problem, it would be a traditional sure. dead end road sign that we could install. Um, we'd want to coordinate that with public work. Well, of course, and I'm just putting it on the table as, as a way to solve the problem she's raised. You well, know, maybe one one approach could be, um, we'll sign it as Davis Point. There's there's really no reason for traffic to go there except for destination traffic. The one house that's in the back and, and this facility, but we could, there'll be a sign at the at the entrance, a stop sign. Um, if If it does become a problem, um, I, I, I know the applicant wouldn't mind putting up a dead end sign sure. at that time. Uh, either way, you, you know, certainly a reasonable request. Sure. Thank you. David. A couple, couple of questions. Uh, regarding the speed, I, I can't answer this professionally, but I did have a meeting relative to something else with the chief the other day, and the question came up posting a road less than 25 miles an hour and, and they don't post except in a school area so okay. the minimum minimum speed limit on roads in cape at 25 miles an hour and i don't see anybody doing 25 miles per hour on that that road but um, they probably wouldn't post it for anything less than that but that also raises another question maureen i'm not really sure what is the definition of this road it's a private access way it's a private road yep. and the reason that we are making the road with it the way we have is because potentially that road could access other future property down there or yes future development it, it i mean under our ordinance you can require it to meet the same standards as any local subdivision road which is a 22 foot wide road right. so you've, you've dropped that down 18 feet well, yeah we've tried to get it as close to those road standards as possible and we all agreed that you know 18 feet would certainly be serviceable for this project, and that would help reduce the fill of that road to be a, a big road, but yet provide a, a paved surface that would be durable and serviceable. Um, just out of a question of interest, if if that tree in question was not able to make it, what height would the tree be that you would put in there? Uh, the tree that we would put in would be, uh, they generally specify them as a three inch caliper tree, two and a half to three inch, which would be the, and I, I'm not a landscape architect, but I think it's at a certain height off the ground, it's got to be a certain three inches in diameter. And I'm going to guess those trees are 14, 16 feet tall, depend, somewhere in that range. Maureen, maybe you can yeah, help it's, with that. <laughs> I mean, it's the standard that we use for plantings. That, they're bigger than the whips that you usually see for trees. And what what professionals will tell you is once you get beyond that size, you start to have a higher mortality rate with transplants. So it's kind of the ideal size that we use for all sites. I have one other question, Owen. On 
on plan uh, sheet two of eight in the vicinity of that area where that tree is we show you show um, uh, some scallops of, yeah I, I assume that the, the darker one that's in the vicinity of the 90 degree of that tree is existing vegetation which you will not be removing. Is that, that, that's correct. But the lighter one that goes down the roadway and circles through probably the middle of the existing building is vegetation that you will probably be removing? That's correct. Okay, so, so anybody that looks at that and looks at the plan, you will be able to see what's left, what will be left and what will be removed, make it easier for you. Correct. There'll be, we think and there'll be one, there's an area right in here. Um, I mean, it, it's sort of this dense, scrubby, woody type growth. And so there'll be some area that will be saved, uh, but we do have to remove right. a fair amount of vegetation. And you'll be in the vicinity of the project signage and the stop sign According to state rules, you do have to clear that vegetation. Is, it, is that yeah. my understanding? Yes. Uh, the, this vegetation, uh, when we, by virtue of moving the, there's an existing sort of pinnacle of vegetation right here. The uh, the existing road's right here next to it, and by virtue of moving that road over, that vegetation disappears because it's right right where the roadway is. And I, you know, I, I think it's. It's an improvement because it does improve the line of sight, actually. Um, question on the lighting on the mm -hmm. signage. Is that going to be on 24 hours a day or all night, or does that have a time clock on it? Um, right now, we have, I would say, it, it potentially could be on 24 hours. It's a gooseneck light uh, that shines on the sign itself, um, so it directs the light at the sign, it's not a, even a ground light that would spray the light up, but it, it is a light that, of fairly low wattage that is, you know, directly at the sign. I, I suppose we could put it on a, a timer that after, um, you know, 9 or 10 o'clock at night, it could automatically go out, and then they would put it on, you know, at, at dusk and during other times. I, I, I mean, the typical hours of business, um, are going to be. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I would think it would be a nice gesture for yep. later in the evening. Yep. Yeah, we can we can put it on a timer. Sure. Good idea. Yeah. Okay. That's all I have. Does anybody else have any questions or comments, Maureen? I just wanted to explain one of the recommendations in the memo. Oh. I had recommended that an additional tree be planted. The tree that I was hoping you would plant is actually in the right-of-way of Route 77, just off of your, right there, right there, yes. So that was the intended location, and the purpose of it was to try to replace some of that existing vegetation that's going to be removed as part of the tr part of the road construction. I do understand that's in the right-of-way, but what I've been hearing is that as long as you're not too emotionally attached to that tree, and, you know, if there's a chance that M MDOT would have to remove it, they haven't been objecting to people planting some things in the right-of-way, as long as if they have to take it down, it's understood they're going to do so. I mean, we're surf perfectly willing to put that additional tree in. I wasn't sure exactly where. I, actually, I was thinking up into the site. But. Yeah, and, and you've packed that according to the standards. I'm not suggesting you need another one. Okay. Good. Nope, that's fine. Um, we, we Paul's, had Paul's probably had some experience with that. It, trees in the right away so I'm, I'm sort of looking over at Paul but I, I mean I mean I think we can try it and if they had to take it out for some labor like said DOT's policy generally would be they don't want to take it out if they absolutely needed to and again they you can do it with the understanding that you know you don't own it if they want to take it they'll take it yeah. so fair enough yep. Thanks. Which, yeah. we'll give it a try <laughs> Ready for a motion? Sure, unless there are any other comments, I think we're ready for a motion. Uh, mo David. Motion for the board to consider findings of fact. Wiley Enterprises LLC is requesting site plan review of a mixed office slash multifamily residential building, including 6,000 square feet of office space and two apartments located on Davis Point Lane, 
which requires review under Section 19-9 Site Plan Regulations. Number two, the plans include conveyance of easements to Lot 1, Lot 2, and the Town of Cape Elizabeth. Three, the applicant and the abutter have agreed in concept to the placement of stockade fencing to, sh to shield the abutter's property from the headlight wash, and I would add to that 32 feet in length. That's in one of the conditions. Okay. The project includes a dumpster surrounded by fencing to screen the dumpster. Number five, the project includes the clearance of existing vegetation to relocate the road and planting of street trees along the reconstructed Davis Point Lane. Number six, the police chief is recommending that there be no construction in Route 77 until after this year's Beach to Beacon race. Number seven, the plant substantially complies with Section 19-9 site plan regulations. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and the materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Wiley Enterprise LLC for site plan review of a mixed office, multifamily residential building, including 6,000 square feet of office space and two apartments located on Davis Point Lane be approved subject to the following conditions. That the plans be revised to reflect the comments of the town engineer in his letter dated 6-14-05. Two, that the sewer and pedestrian access easements be submitted in a form acceptable to the town attorney and town manager. Number three, that a six foot high wood stockade, stockade fence up to 32 feet long in actual length to be determined by the abutter be placed on Davis Point Lane, southern right of way boundary across the entrance to the parking lot. Number four, that the fence screening for the dumpster be a wood stockade fence. And number five, that the plans include a note that soil suitable for tree growth be placed along the entire length of Davis Point Lane for widths of five feet to support the proposed trees. Number six, that an additional red oak tree be planted on the south side of Davis Point Lane in route 77 right away, approximately 40 feet east of the nearest proposed tree, unless the main Department of Transportation objects in writing to planting the tree. Number seven, the applicant not, that the applicant not begin any utility connections into Route 77 that will disrupt the pavement until after the Beach Beacon race, which is scheduled for August 6, 2005. Number eight, that there be no alterations of the site, no issuance of a building permit until the plans and materials are revised to reflect the above conditions and submitted to the town plan for the determination that the conditions have been satisfied. Okay, a motion has been made. Second. There's a second. Uh, if I recall correctly, we had talked about two additional conditions and I, I just wonder if we need to add those in that the plans be revised to include the installation of a dead-end sign. Do we need to include well, that I, I, as a condition? Well, my, I thought the uh, applicant's engineer's suggestion was just coordinate that with uh, Director of Public Works. And if, if there's an issue, we can add it later. I, I'm not sure it needs to be uh, a condition of approval uh, as such, but certainly the record reflects that if traffic becomes an issue and the director of public works thinks it's a good idea to give it a shot, uh, the applicants expressed a willingness to try it. Uh, I, I'm not sure it needs to be part of the conditions of approval. Do you, anyone feel otherwise? Well, I, I have no doubt that the applicant would comply with the spirit of our discussion, but it seems to me we ought to make it an express condition. That's fine. Um, but I think your recollection is correct mm. that it's not necessarily something that has to be done. It's sure. only to be done if need be in the future. So is there a way to qualify that? Maybe we could put like after a period of one year that we review the traffic patterns with planner and public works director and then the applicant would install a sign if appropriate or something. That, that sounds fine. Yeah. I'm hoping we don't have an issue. <laughs> <laughs> the only other 
issue I heard being raised was the timer on the lights, and I don't know. Again, it. Uh, I, I would think that the owner would, would, see a benefit to that, and also, you know, a gesture to help the neighbors. I think he'd probably comply with that without us having. Is that an issue if that's made it as a condition? No, he. Uh, we just sort of discussed it. Um, at say, maybe after 10 o'clock, the timer would be set. That no later than 10 o'clock, it would go out until dusk the next day. Is fine. I think that would be fine. So the motion has been made, uh, seconded. We've had uh, two additional conditions made. Uh, all those in favor of the motion as amended? Yeah, the motion carries. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, thank you also to the abutters who have obviously worked very closely with this. Your input has been very helpful and very much appreciated. Last item on our agenda is the farm camp at Turkey Hill site plan. Nicole Chasen and Holly Sheehan are requesting site plan review to operate a summer camp up for up to 32 children at Turkey Hill Farm, located at 122 Old Ocean House Road. The planning board will consider completeness and also hold a public hearing at this meeting. The application will be reviewed as a school for compliance with section 19-9 site plan regulations. At this point, I would ask the applicant to uh, introduce the project when you are when you're ready. Good evening. Thanks for hearing us tonight. I'm Nicole Chasen. Um, along with Holly Sheehan, I'm a co-director of Turkey Hill Farm Camp. Um, and I'm sorry that I didn't, we weren't actually at your site walkthrough that night. I was stuck on traffic on the Casco Bay Bridge. That was just half of it. Yeah. Oh, we, we, we actually, you were there for most of it, so okay. thank you. Um, Holly's going to talk in a minute just about um, the farm camp program, but I was going to orient you. Um, to where things are on the property. <clears throat> and this is an aerial photograph. Um, so this is Old Ocean House Road. No, I'm sorry, this is Old Ocean House Road here. This is Route 77. The driveway comes in um, down here and comes around in a cul-de-sac like that. Um, this is the farm camp barn where um, farm camp central headquarters is going to be. We're going to use the barn um, in inclement weather for the children to play inside. It's a very large beautiful old barn. And then there's a garage here which will be kept locked that has all the, we'll, we'll have garbage and other things that we want to keep away from the children. And the, the house is here. It's 122 Old Ocean House Road, and it's owned by Peter Eastman, the land. It's currently being farmed by John Brenner and um, John Bliss and Stacy Brenner, who are uh, farming the land. This is um, the garden for the farm, and then the children will have a small garden here called the Children's Garden, which is right off, um, right off the barn. Their, their play area and activity area will be here in the shady area. There'll be picnic tables set up for arts and crafts and lunches. Um, porta potties. We're, we're, we're having porta potties this year, and hope and hopefully we'll be able to continue next year and plan to build a vault toilet system. But for this year, the, the porta potties are going to go um, right here, sort of in back where those trees are there. Um, there are going to be some animals on the farm, sheep, chicken, pigs, and bunny rabbits. <laughs> um, 
the animals are going to be over here in this area. And also there's a, there are some greenhouse structures which have been built, one here and one here, and um, there's some animals going to be right over here. This is um, the wooded area here is part of the um, Cape Elizabeth Green Belt Trails Program, and there's some trails running through um, the area. It's a 25-acre lot, um, and the children will be doing some hiking through the wooded area. Um, parking, we, we have designated 30 parking spots through, um, throughout here where the cul-de-sac is. Uh, six or seven spots here, probably eight spots here, um, six to eight spots here, and then over here, another six to eight spots. I don't know, I didn't do my math while I was adding that up, but um, that's where um, parents will park and then um, walk their children safely over here um, to the camp barn where they will be welcomed every morning. Um, I think that's about it. So um, that's it for my presentation. And now Holly Sheehan is going to speak to us briefly about the, the farm camp program. Well, the, the property, as Nicole said, is, and as you know, is owned by Peter Eastman. And his, um, his vision for this 25 acres is that it's a community resource and a working farm. And it's been under farming operation for a year and a half as an organic um, vegetable and, and animal farm. And we're taking the next step in starting uh, a summer school for children. We'll have 32 three to eight year olds. And the curriculum is focused around the farm animals, the garden, as, as well as the local ecology. So they'll really gain a sense of place about their own community and the natural ecosystems. Um, this pro my experience is that I created a similar program in Freeport at Wolf's Neck Farm. So this is sort of building on, on what we did there, um, but for Cape Elizabeth. And um, it's just, it's a, it's a simple day camp. There's no overnight um, use at this point, and it's 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 a way of um, you know taking that next step and opening up the property to the community. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any questions? Well, we 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 will in a moment. At first, we need to determine the issue of whether the application is complete. So before we take any further steps, I'd like the board to address that issue. If anybody has any comments or questions on that? Otherwise, I think a motion may be in order. Peter? Um, I have a motion for the board to consider that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Nicole Chasen and Holly Sheehan for site plan review to operate the farm camp at Turkey Hill Farm located at 122 Ocean House Road for up to 32 children be deemed complete. Second. A okay, motion has been made for completeness and been seconded. All those in favor? That point. Motion carries. Uh, at this point, uh, we have uh, scheduled a public hearing. So unless there are any suggestions otherwise, I'll open up the meeting for the public hearing. If anyone would like to step up at the podium and speak about the application, they're certainly welcome to do so. Seeing no comments, I'll now close the public hearing. Uh, and at this point, I'll open it up to the board if they have any questions or comments on the application. Yes. Mr. Chairman, oh. uh, the only one comment I might, ha might have is that you folks are proposing to do a one-way circulation loop inside. Um, just as a matter for those who may be unfamiliar, I might suggest just a sign so somebody doesn't meet somebody coming the wrong way. That might be the only suggestion. That will, will be the only suggestion I have. We've got a sign that has an arrow to show the, the club, the car. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. David? I have a couple of questions. Would you, uh, would you review the procedure on the porta parties just so that we'll have it on a record as to where they are and, and we, uh, the procedure for next year? And 
If you could just uh, step up to the, so we can catch you on film and uh, um, we've worked with the state and had a lot of conversations with them as well as the code enforcement officer, like Cape Elizabeth, and they've given us permission for this first year to use portable toilets. Um, we also have access to a bathroom inside the breezeway of the farmhouse um, where there's running water in case we need running water for cleaning or um, if there's a, someone gets cut that kind of thing, so we have access to, to warm, to hot water in a sink. Um, there will be the hand sanitizer in the portable toilets, and then in order to get permission next year to, to continue the program, we've been instructed that we need to put in a vault toilet system, um, and so we're, we're, we've had really positive conversations with um, Mr. Eastman about moving in that direction, so if we do continue next year, which is our intent, we will have a permanent toilet system. Uh, could you explain one other thing to me? Uh, what's your plan as far as the pathways are concerned? I know you took us on a tour of that, but uh, in, in terms of what we're using, using some of the trails with the and, children on the site, and and the fact that um, you told us that you would, you know, keep away from the neighbors and things like that. Um, well, uh, actually, I think uh, I got a little confused too. I, it may have been one of your colleagues that it, led us on the site walk. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just saw her come in. I don't know if, if you would like to have her address that question. Sure, if you don't mind. Yeah, I'll say that we are part of the curriculum is, is the forest ecology, and so we're intending to use the trails, but in terms of how to keep them away from the neighbors. Stacy's more familiar with exactly who those neighbors are and where. Do you, about the property. Do you all have a map of the property? Yes. Yes, we do. If you trail. if you were to enter the trail from the driveway. Do you see that trail entrance? Is that the tote road? Mm hmm Okay. Yeah. You follow that along, and if you were to continue more or less straight, you come out to Avon Road, and that would be the first neighbor you would encounter. So you'd, you'd, you're just going to try to keep within the lot lines? Exactly, Good. yeah. So unless you were to leave the property and go out beyond a onto Avon Road, beyond the property line where those water towers are, and the, the water tower and the two um, observation towers, you, you would only encounter that one neighbor. And then if you come and follow it back around towards the field. Well, that's where we walked them. Exactly, okay. yeah. <clears throat> you really don't, you, you don't interact with any other that's neighbors. And, it, and, and you, there's a nice buffer between the trail and the property line. And that trail that goes up towards the other corner on the Trundy Road, that's really not a complete trail at this time. Exactly. Okay. That's all the questions I had. Does anybody else have any questions? If not, is there a motion for the board to consider? Paul? Motion for approval. Findings of fact, Nicole Chasen and Holly Sheehan are requesting a site plan review to operate the farm camp at Turkey Hill Farm for up to 32 children, which requires review under section 19-9 site plan regulations. The Public Works Director is recommending that the first 10 feet of the driveway extending from Old Ocean House Road be paved. The State of Maine has approved a portable toilet sanitation system for one year and the application substantially complies with Section 19-9 Site Plan Regulations. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Nicole Chasen and Holly Sheehan for Site Plan Review to operate the farm camp at Turkey Hill Farm, located at 122 Old Ocean House Road, for up to 32 children, be approved subject to the following condition. One, that the farm camp not operate after 2005 until the first 10 feet of the driveway extending from Old Ocean House Road be paved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion, comments? All those in favor? 
motion carries. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. I believe that covers our agenda for the evening. Anybody have a motion to adjourn? I move, <laughs> I move that we adjourn. Seconded? Seconded. All those in favor? The meeting is adjourned. Thank you.